Welcome to another podcast. Are you guilty of being a Christian? I'll be right back. Can anyone call you a Christian without you telling them? Is there any telltale signs? Is there a difference in you? Can anyone see a difference in your life? Can you stand out among the crowd? Do you do the same thing they do? Laugh at the same thing they laugh at? Is there a difference? If being a Christian was uh, illegal, is there enough evidence to have you arrested? Is there enough evidence when you go to court that can find you guilty? Is there any evidence at all or would they just let you go? How would you plead? What will anyone say on your behalf? Your accusers, what would they say? Or would you have any accusers? If Christianity was illegal. Well, it is illegal in some countries. Some Muslim countries. Some uh, Hindu uh, countries, parts of India. It's, it is illegal. Not all Muslim countries. The most... Would you, would there be enough evidence to convict? When you go to court and stand before a judge, what would you say? Would you immediately confess? Yes, I am born again or you give a long statement about being a Christian or why you not actually a long statement can can actually convince a judge that you're not a Christian Well, Judge, you know, a lot of people believe different things. Uh, A lot of different ways uh, uh, we go to church and so on and et cetera. You know, um, people are different. You got your way and I got mine. Would that be your excuse? This is kind of an attenuation from uh, my last episode. I just want to know if there's any evidence that could be held against you in the court of law if Christianity was illegal. Did you say anything that is illegal? Did you bother to tell anyone about Christ? You know, you can tell people about Christ without saying a word by the simple life that you lead. 
Would anyone come up to you? Would, would, would a police officer, if Christianity was illegal, come up to you and question you just by the way you act, just by the way you live? Would he come up to you and question your behavior? Want to know who are you and why you behave the way you do, why you live the way you do? And when you get to court, the prosecuting attorney, what would he have to say against you? Would he say, I, I, we have witnesses of seeing this, observing this person praying? We have witnesses seeing this person being kind and being polite and respectful to others, carrying on a conversation that is unbefitting of the world. When I say the world, I'm talking about those outside of the church. Would he say this person never go to bars, never go to hang around strip clubs? I would just, we witness this person. What would the witnesses say? We tell dirty jokes and this person don't la don't laugh. We talk about women in a der derogatory way and this person walks away from us. Don't get involved with our conversation. We cuss and use foul language. And not this not this person, not this guy. We witness him reading the Bible, according scripture. We witness this guy is just something that was different. Even though he didn't say anything to us, we know there's something different about the way he looks, the way he carry himself away. She carry herself. There's something different. Your Honor, this man, something's not right. Something is different about him. He had, his behavior, his attitude, his mannerisms are consistent with those who call themselves Christians. Would that be you? What about your defense attorney? He bring on resident on witnesses. Say, uh, no, nah, I don't know about this guy. No, nah, he's not a Christian. He just like to do things different. That's all. We we'll bring on more witnesses to say. That you just choose a different path than others. You're not really a, quit, a Christian. All just to save yourself. Save your reputation. To keep face in your business, in the business world. I can't have it out that I'm a Christian because, you know, People I do business with, uh, they, they may not like me going to that particular church or may not like me being associated with people who call themselves Christians. Or would you simply flat out say, Your Honor, there's no need for defense. The, or would you say defense rests? 
Would your defense attorney say the defense rests? There's no need for further witnesses. Guilty as charged. I am born again. I am a child of the living God. Filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm born of his word. Yes, all those things they said I did, I did it. I read my Bible. I go to church. I lift my hand in prayer. I say grace before I eat my food. I give all thanks to the living God. I give all praises to the one who created me. I'm not ashamed of it. And if I lose everything and lose my freedom, guilty as charged. And if I lose my business deals, lose my job, he's the one who created the job, the one I serve. He'll get me another one. Or would you just try to hide it and say, well, that's a private matter. Being a Christian is not a private matter. We say we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That only means that your mama can't get saved for you. Your daddy can't get saved for you. But when you get saved, Jesus told us to shout it out from the rooftop. You don't keep quiet about it. You shine your light so all men can see. I wonder what other religions would say. I guarantee you 100% Muslims will let you know straight out. They are Muslims. They are not ashamed of it. They won't try to hide it. Especially if you go to, to, to these Middle Eastern nations. They, they got to tell you right up front, they ain't ashamed. There's no shame in them at all. No explanation. See, I tell the judge, well, I don't know why you wasting your time. I am guilty. <laughs> we have to give a long explanation. Why we are Christian. All we got to do. I'm guilty as can be. I'm guilty as charged. I know plenty of Buddhists who say yes. It seems that other religions and other people of different, uh, we, okay, I use the term the world, use other faiths are more, more sold out to what they believe than what we believe. And we believe that their, their doctrine is not the correct one. But they are more sold out to it than what we believe. We get no faith. We have, uh, oh, may, may I say, we have little faith in God when it comes to being qu questioned about our belief in Him. When somebody questions us, the faith that we have in us seems to shrink. That because you probably don't have it in you. Jesus Christ is a wonderful counselor, wonderful savior, and we can't say nothing when we approach and ask about being a Christian or just simply living that life every day. Colossians uh, chapter 4, 
Verse 5, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. Redeeming the time. As a speech I used last, uh, scripture I used last time. Let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Walking in wisdom to those on the outside, the outside of the faith, outside of the church. Walk in wisdom that we may show them who Jesus is by our conduct. What the true church is all about. But in this present day and time, we seem to want to hide it. We seem to want to not want to be embarrassed. But Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'm ashamed of you. And that's why I asked the question, what would happen if Christianity was illegal and they dragged you in the court? What would you do? Would you plead guilty? Would you go to a long trial? Bringing in witnesses? What about me? No. No. There will be no reason for a witness. There's no need for a defense. Yeah, I'm guilty. What's the problem? Yeah, I'm a Christian. So what? But everybody can't do that. Everybody won't do that. Let me read 1 Timothy 4.12. Now, Paul is instructing Timothy in the ministry as a young pastor. Uh, I want to concentrate on the latter part of, of this scripture. It says, let no one despise your youth, but be an, right here, this is the part, be an example to the, to the believers in the world in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Let's start with the preachers also to be that example to us. How we should conduct ourselves in this present world. And we are the example to the rest of the world how a Christian should act think, believe in this world. And if we ever, if this country ever get to the point where it is illegal, and I think we're ahead, it seems like we're headed that way. What are you going to do? Are you just going to go along with society? Whatever society say or think, that's what you're going to do. Are you going to get a spiritual backbone, man up, and say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Father, in the name of Jesus, Oh, I thank you so much that we are in a country that we can worship you freely, openly. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that it is not illegal 
to worship you as a, as a child of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word, for your truth. It's churches all over this city of Charlotte, North Carolina. There's churches everywhere. Many countries we can't go to. We, many countries we can go to, they are not churches everywhere. There are churches who have to hold service in secret. There are Christians now who are on trial, who are in prison for being a Christian. We should always be thankful for the freedom that we have and not neglect it. But I thank you, Father God, for all you've done and all you will do. I pray, Jesus, the martyrs, the voice of the martyrs. It's an organization that keeps track of these Christians who are in prison and who are being murdered for the cause of Christ. Many Christians are in prison right now. I pray for them. The ACLJ organization who advocate for these people in prison in other countries. I pray for them, Father God. I pray that you will help them. Jay Sekulow, I pray for him, Lord Jesus. Him and his organizations. Pray for Dr. Brown, his organization, to help people. I pray, Jesus, that you will help these young men and women who are on trial for their life for just believing in you. I pray, Father God, in your name, that you will set them free. I pray in the name of Jesus for many people in this country men who call themselves Christians who are trying to hide their light, they get real or get out. Stop causing a bad, uh, shining a bad light on the church. I pray in your name, Lord Jesus, for for Bishop Patrick Wharton, for his ministry, that you would touch him. I pray for that newly appointed bishop of Mexico in the Church of God in Christ. Surrounded by the cartel in a very hostile situ- uh, environment. I pray, Father God, in your wonderful holy name for the different ministries around the world that you may bless and touch them. Jesus, thank you for all you do, all you have done, as you guide and lead us in your wonderful name. Amen. Please drop me an email and your prayer requests at call to serve 316 g at gmail.com. Call to serve 316 at gmail.com. May the grace of our Lord be with you always and forever.